from Emmys. No comment, uh, but Emmys, thank you so much for that. And I'm hearing word that we are ready to have Karma run Sweet Home for us. So whenever you're ready, take it home. Hey, uh, this is Karma, and well, as previously stated, we're going to be playing some Sweet Home. Now, some of you may actually recognize this under like a slightly different title screen. There's another popular translation out there by Gaijin, but uh, in about 2016, uh, JMN and The Siege put out a new translation. And so for the sake of showing that off, I kind of wanted to play that. Uh, so, first things first, what names are we going out, or are we going with? All right, um, well, if you could just start me off with whichever character I should go with first. <laughs> uh, Kazuo? Okay, Kazuo right now, uh, has SPOOPY in all caps, that's S-P-O-O-P-Y, uh, at $36. Nice. Sorry, thirty-six dollars sixty-six cents. we're going for that SPOOPY number. <laughs> for the spoops, all right. Uh, Akiko? Akiko is also spoopy at six dollars right. sixty six cents. Uh, I have much appreciation for whoever is making these donations, by the way. <laughs> All right, um, and Taguchi slash Taru Taru. Uh, Taguchi is also once again all caps, all spoopy, same amount. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Asuka. Um, Asuka once again spoopy, six dollars sixty six cents, all caps at S P O O P Y. Okay, and Emmy? Oh, Emmy's bucking the trend here. Uh, Emmy here is at... Ah! <laughs> Wait, what was that? It cut out? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, 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 that screen was too spoopy. So that's in all caps. A, H, 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 H. That's A with four H's afterwards. Um, and an exclamation point. Uh, oh, shoot. Did I say there was exclamation points? Um, how should I remedy this? I think I said there was only question mark and period, but I might have accidentally said. Should I just put an extra H on the end? Uh, I'm down for that if you are. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sorry for whoever donated for the exclamation point. I'm changing it to an H. Which is great because she's going to be our solo character for a little while, but we'll get into that shortly. So we've got spoopy, spoopy, spoopy. Spoopy and ah. Ah, really? Uh, that sounds correct to me. <laughs> uh, the timer on this starts a little bit in, so um, I'm just going to skip this cutscene. Basically, all you need to know is that we're going into a spooky haunted house to get, like, pictures of the frescoes that are in here. Uh, the timer will start in about three, two, one go so right off the bat uh we control individual members of the team and we have to basically create a team that we're going to mostly take through the mansion and what determines what's important about this team is their key items that they have everybody has an item that's special to them so we have kazuo with the lighter that burns ropes in our way and we have, oh, sorry, we have Spoopy with rope <laughs> burning powers. We have Spoopy with a vacuum that sucks up glass. And we have Ah with a key. All right. <laughs> this is going to get fun. Um, so these are the three items that we mostly need for traversal. The items that we're leaving behind are... Actually, I forget what the other Spoopy has because we never use it. But um, one of them has a med kit. Oh, right, camera. One of them has a camera that's useful for a casual playthrough because you're supposed to go through the mansion and take pictures of the frescoes on the wall, and those give you hints on how to actually proceed through the mansion. And uh, one thing that's actually... In well, actually, let's... Uh, yeah, I'll get to that. Um... This translation is fantastic if you're wanting to play through the game without a guide. A lot of the frescoes give you hints, which the old Gaijin translation were okay about, but 
Um, the newer 2016 translation has some updated information to give you some nicer tips. So that's definitely something I appreciate about this. You'll notice that uh, when I'm getting into fights here, I'm mostly going to be using prayer attacks. And that's just to make sure we kill all the enemies in one turn. We always move first. Also, hey, did you know that this game probably inspired Resident Evil? Well, if not, now you do. <laughs> There's a lot of little things that you'll probably notice going throughout this. Uh, we're going to wait here just a second to let this bat get out of our way. You'll notice I did a quick save there. And uh, that's mostly because, well, enemies like this. So the main detriment to this run is the fact that some enemies can inflict very dangerous status effects. And they basically are run ending if you don't have a save to fall back on, or if you don't have a med kit or pills to heal the status effect with. So that sounds right, like so safety we're gonna grab... saves are, are a must for this game. Yeah. They're also extremely fast to load, so you... For the sake of a marathon, you lose almost nothing just popping over and doing that quickly. Because all you have to do is just hit the restart option and it takes you immediately back to your last save. Or you just hit the reset button on your uh, console and then just hit start and you're immediately back at the last save that you had. Uh, so, the fight system is basic RPG kind of stuff. You have your basic attack where you do low damage. You have uh, prayer attacks that spend a resource to do more damage. Um, you can also use items in this game to damage enemies. I'm actually going to loop around a little bit here to hope that I can get maggots here because I can kill those very quickly with a lighter. And that would get me level three very easily, hopefully. All right, cool. So you have extremely limited inventory and healing in this game. You do not heal on level up. The only way you can heal is by using a tonic of which there are a limited number in the mansion. And uh, on top of that, there's like, you can, there's a way to restore your prayer points later, but this game has permadeath, basically, where when a character dies, they are dead for good. So we're going to use the key here. Um, to people who may have seen other speedruns of this game, there are a couple different routes that you can go through this game with, and we are taking the non-generator skip route. So there's a generator that we're going to be going to to turn on, and that basically unlocks a good portion of the mansion. Theoretically, if you very carefully time something, you can get past that without turning the generator on, but it actually... This game has a lot of level gates, so we're going to use that board very... very carefully to cross these gaps without falling in. Normally when you put down a wood board or a plank, it has five uses, but that board has a hundred. And when I say use, I mean that's a step with a character. Torsos are a little bit dangerous because they can grapple onto a character, and then you have to pray to break that character free. But and thankfully we're at the point where... Here. Uh, so what's prayer yeah. here? Is that like the spell system of this game? Because yeah. this is very much an RPG. Uh-huh. That's basically your magic points or MP or mana or whatever you want to call it. All right, so... What I'm trying to do at this point is hit level four, and then I'm going to use that tonic. The next area has some very dangerous encounters, so... The more fights I get, like, right now, the better. Alright, well, uh, if chat, you could all just join me in uh, praying these enemies away so so Karma's party of Spoopy, Spoopy, and Ah uh, gets as much experience as possible. Uh, I'd greatly appreciate that. Yeah, which we do have two other characters. They will get some amount of use, but they're mostly going to be used to kind of cheese 
transportation of the other characters. Uh, there's also some environmental hazards in this mansion. Sometimes you step on a panel and then the room gets engulfed in flames, it's fine. You don't wow. actually take that much damage per hit when you are standing in those, so typically what you want to do is just walk through them as quickly as possible. So I'm going to turn around and swap to Ah, because she has more prayer points right now. The main point of prayer in terms of locking progress is that there are items or objects that you look at that you interact with that you need to pray for. And uh, in this case, we're going to need to have... Oh, uh, by the way, flashing warning right here. I know there's a, a warning on the stream, but there's going to be a bit of flashing on this part. So we need to give it the spear, and then we need to pray our maximum of 12 points, and then lightning is going to come down and strike open the window and give us access to the garden. Just very normal, spooky, haunted mansion things. It's fine, I'm sure. This is apparently the theme for today, spooky mansions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm fine just grabbing the gas and going, I think, here. These spirits, if you get hit with them, or if they hit a party member, they separate that party member from the group they are in and uh, take them somewhere else. So you see it says low points. That just means I'm trying to... Good. Come on. There we go. I was just trying to use the exact eight points because I do need to do very high damage to those to kill them in one turn. Oh, so you have to Every hit the meter enemy... at the exact point. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You, you cannot choose how many prayer points you have to... or you want to use. You actually have to time it. Which... On spots where you need to use a certain number of prayer points or it doesn't let you through, it can get kind of annoying. Um, so we're about to go in and turn on the generator. Oh right, that's what I was going on about. Because of the level gates, it's actually not... T I'm not totally sure right now that the generator skip in a human run that isn't like totally tasked unless you get it down to a perfect science, um, is that much faster. So not only is not doing the generator skip a lot more consistent, but uh, it's a lot... It, it feels like it's just about the same speed for the most part. So there's like no real difference. Uh, well, okay, a little bit of difference, but <laughs> for a marathon... I don't want to like... Yeah. For a marathon especially, it's good to do this route, I think. Okay, so we have a couple other Spoopy people. So we're going to take Spoopy, and we're going to team up with Spoopy. <laughs> Not confusing and, at uh, all, folks. <laughs> thankfully, like, they're always in the same order in the menus, so while there might be some slight confusion in terms of which Spoopy I have selected sometimes... Oh my gosh, I am not getting an encounter when I actually want one. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to use the call function to call our first Spoopy, aka who would normally be Kazuo. And when you're in a fight, when you call the other team, they can't get into another fight. So we're just going to keep those two in a fight that lasts for a long time while this group goes around and does a bunch of things that they need to do. <laughs> Is that intentional game design? It's pretty cool, actually. Wow. <laughs> when you're playing through this casually, what you'll probably wind up doing is creating a team of two and a team of three. And uh, whenever you get into fights, you'll probably call them and have all five of them join the same fight so everybody gets experience. But uh, it turns out when you're very heavily using prayer points to get through the run, and uh, items in some cases, you uh, can actually get through pretty easily with a group of three. You just have to have enough faith. Uh-huh. So here's where we're gonna use the board. Normally what happens if you step on a board and it breaks, that character 
becomes stuck in that tile and slowly takes damage over time. So you want to make sure you free them. Okay, so we're going to call Spoopy one more time. And we're going to pray for four points to end that encounter. And then Spoopy needs the log. And we're just going to sneak into a room where we're about to do some grinding. Whoops. No, I don't want to use the rope. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I want to use the key. We're going to be using the ropes here. Uh, the next room has a couple of enemies that you can actually use the ropes on as combat items, and it does a lot of damage. So we're going to end that encounter, swap back over to our other squad, and we're going to grind up here to about level 7. So, uh, yeah, if you've got some donations, go ahead and go forward with those. All right. Uh, well, to start with, a hungry devil donates $25 and says, For K! Um, <laughs> and uh, once again, <laughs> folks, that is a reference to our Fatal Frame 3 incentive, uh, where if we make $4,000, right now we're sitting at $1,325, Miss Scarlet Tanager will save K. In fact, I, I believe that's actually Karma's, Karma's choice if uh, you want to donate for uh, the runner's choice. Yeah. So uh, definitely get your donations in for that. Uh, Mech Analyst Tom donates $50. No comment, but thank you so much for your generous donation. Uh, Aeon Frodo donates $10. Hey, just want to wish all the ladies good luck with your runs and to have fun. Blueberry says, Hey, Mom, just want to say hi. I I'm sorry, Blueberry. I, I think Samurasi popped off the, the host dust already, but you know what? We're getting that message across for you. Um, I, I hope you're home, and I hope it's not sweet home, Sam. <laughs> uh, Tashina d donates $25. No comment, but thank you so much for your generosity. And Anonymous donates $130. Also no comment, but thank you all so much. Again, all of these donations are going to uh, Malala Fund, which is an excellent cause, again, promoting um, education for girls around the world. I think we're about one more donation. Sure thing. Ichi Ichiro Mamiya donates just in time. Ten dollars. How oh, can no. you ignore the frescoes? <sighs> Ichiro, your your paintings are beautiful. Your frescoes are beautiful. <laughs> I highly recommend that people actually play this casually and experience the frescoes for themselves. And uh, that is you mentioned there say. are two translations for this, uh, the Gaijin translation and one in 2016, which is the one you're playing, I believe? Yes, we are playing the 2016 JMN and the Siege translation. Uh, all right. So now that we've done all that grinding, we're going to drop a save. And I just realized I should actually use my healing item. <laughs> It's actually not the health that I'm concerned about. It's more of the prayer points because we could run into something that we need to pray against. You'll notice that I took a little bit of a weird path there, but if you walk straight to the door there, there is a trap that springs on you. And while it doesn't do much damage, it takes time to uh, go through the cutscene of. So yeah, we're just, we're just Definitely gonna walk around it, it's step. fine. Yeah. Uh, Cuttlefishman in chat asks, uh, is there a notable time difference between the translations? Um, so, as far as the text itself goes, not particularly. Um, the main thing is RNG, like, I think there's a little bit less text in this compared to some of the other versions, but RNG on encounters is basically decided on the frame that you end an encounter. So different lengths of text, while it might not take that much different time to get through each battle, every little frame does lead to a bit of a difference in when you get your next encounter. It's actually pretty interesting if you play this on an emulator and look up the address for how many steps until your next encounter. Um, just seeing how altering your timing a little bit changes things. And if if I'm seeing that correctly, those are just items just right on the ground. Uh-huh. Yeah, your inventory management here... is the ground, huh? Yep. 
Every character has two slots of normal inventory, a weapon slot, and a key item slot. You cannot change the key items. However, if a character dies and you lose the item that that character, or like you lose that character, there are replacement items, but you have to sacrifice an inventory slot for that. So yeah, a lot of the routing for this is a lot of item management. And I think one of my biggest gripes, I used to play through this very casually in terms of like, you know, every Halloween, I just play through this and follow like, <laughs> one Very of the game facts time. guides and uh, my biggest complaint about the guide that I always used was that it never told me when it was okay to leave items behind oh no so I would be like holding on to so many things like what can I let go of <laughs> so part of why I learned the speed run was literally just to learn what items I could leave behind where <laughs> so you have to remember where you left them behind as well Sometimes, yes, but for the most part in this run, when I leave an item behind, I don't come back for it. You'll notice I kind of stopped for this armor because every, uh, every armor that I do fight is good experience, and the ladder happens to work much like the rope in that it does a lot of damage to wow. these armors, which saves me both taking damage and fire points. And that's actually another thing about this game. You always go first with your entire party before the enemy gets a chance to attack. So if you're running around with a party of three, you get three attacks to kill the enemy without having to worry about it getting a chance to attack you. So a lot of what we're doing with this route is making sure that we always have the damage to kill things in three hits or less. Uh, you mentioned not using uh, prayer points. Is there no way to sort of like recover those? Uh, later on, we get a method of doing so, but that's not until very end game. Ah, uh, not 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 meaning to call the character who apparently has the strongest prayer, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... For the most part, the only healing through, or like the only prayer point res restores that we get, I think I actually am fine to just attack, attack, and mallet these. Yeah, I am. Okay. I couldn't quite remember. All right, so we're going to use the ladder to get down into the courtyard. But yeah. Tonics fully restore your health and your prayer points of everybody in the current party, so... Me using a tonic with this group of three does not heal the other two back at the start of the mansion. So if you're playing this casually, you'll typically uh, get your party together, get them all into one fight, and then use the tonic. So this mirror just attacks us. It's fine. It's totally fine. And now that we've defeated the mirror, we're going to smash it with a mallet. <laughs> and uh, this this fountain looks pretty nice, don't you think? It it looks lovely. Uh huh. Yeah, definitely appetizing looking water. We would definitely not drink that water. <laughs> oh well, I have some news for you. We're gonna drink it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see a question and, uh, in chat. Uh, what do the flying spirits do if they run into you? They take that party member away and put them somewhere else, which is usually not a great thing, but it's we actually will take advantage. It's not to the back of the, to the front of the mansion where everyone else is. Right. Each spirit has kind of a set location where it's going to take you. All right. So uh, we're going to take a look at this fountain. All right. Yeah. Fountain. Let, let's take a sip. It still flows. Oh. Don't you just hate uh, when you accidentally drink the blood of Mamiya's victims? We, All right, we well, were fools. Yep, we're just gonna fill up this pail with the blood, it's fine. And uh, there's somebody that tells us that blood melts copper, so we're just gonna use that blood on that copper statue, and uh, yeah, we're good. Today I learned. <laughs> we're gonna grab these pills because they're one of like the backup items. And uh, there are some enemies in the near future 
We theoretically, if you're playing this normally, you would have the gloves in your inventory to pass through those brambles without any issues. But we're speed running. We're just gonna take the damage. It's fine. What, what's a couple of thorns when when you need time? Yeah, it's like I, it's not even a significant amount of damage. So at this point, we're pretty uh, freely using prayer points because we're just gonna... We want the experience from the enemies here. And we also just... Like, most of the time where we're just taking a slightly slower route through an area, we're just kind of also getting experience points. So it just kind of works out, you know? There's boats for two, but we're just gonna send Emmy in alone. She's... She's strong. She can handle it. Or sorry, we're sending Ah in alone. <laughs> I'm so used to <laughs> their normal names. This is like those bridge puzzles where where one person there's like one lantern and three people and only two people can cross at a time. Yeah. Except this in this case, Spoopy and Spoopy don't eat each other, so it's a lot easier. Oh, okay, that's very important. But but zombies <laughs> might eat them. Apparently, yeah. or maniacs. Thankfully, running isn't that hard, usually. Sometimes it can be rude. So on this memorial here, we're going to look at it first, then use the shovel, and then pray, and then look at it twice. And that lets us get the basement or the low key out of that. And theoretically, we could just take the boats back to the entrance, but I'm just going to take the boat back to the rest of my team and let some encounters happen on my way back out. It's okay, Spoopy and Spoopy. Nice. Uh, you can still be <laughs> sidekicks. <laughs> yeah. Um, ah is about to get very strong with the weapon that we're going to get later. Very soon, actually. So we're just going to be making our way out if you maybe want to throw in one donation. Sure thing. I have uh, $25 here from Seth. No comment, but thank you so much. And uh, Karaga13 also donates $25. Glad to give to this amazing cause. I'm excited to see the Resident Evil 2 remake as I can never get enough of that game. Well, you're in luck because that is coming up next. And uh, speaking of which, that game also has an incentive. Um, we've got a setting bid war for Resident Evil 2 Remake where you can choose uh, for Cyanide Sugar to run the game in the standard setting. So, you know, good on with Leon S. Kennedy or the noir setting where he's a hard boiled detective, you see? <laughs> so here's Yamamura. And uh, as soon as you run into Yamamura, your party gets split up and you Encounters get turned off, and you basically just have to follow Yamamura. And it it doesn't totally lock your movement, but we just kind of want to follow him and uh, get some dialogue that's important, and he also helps us unlock a couple of things. And uh, if you're paying attention, he also teaches you that you can use mallets to break through certain walls, and there are certain statues that can be pushed. I wonder what uh, good old Ichiro Mamiya has to say about about his walls being broken. Oop. All right. Well, I'm sure he's fine. At the... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to grab this party, and we're going to grab a tonic. And then I'm going to go push this statue back into the blood, because that's just something you do. Grab this amulet real quick. The Actually, totally the, normal uh, blood again. That's not uh -huh. like the, vict the, the blood of victims or anything. Just, just yeah. blood. I'm probably not going to go too heavily into the actual story of this game. It's it's pretty intense. I'll say that much. We're in a home. There was blood victims. Uh, there are frescoes that are being ignored. And, <laughs> and we're praying. Yeah. We're going to use that same tactic that we did before. And uh, we're going to grab this bow real quick. And we want to swap the rope for the bow. There's a lot of details on how it happens, and I think that's something that I would probably say, watch the movie and uh, 
do a casual playthrough of this game yourself just to get the real story. You you want All that? All right, so we're gonna call Ah. We're gonna call Ah once and then do a prayer. So Ah is gonna run off and do a bunch of stuff on her own for a little bit here. Yeah, the story also does make a lot more sense with the frescoes I saw somebody comment on. So we are skipping a fair bit of the content in that regard. Um, if I if I remember correctly, just, just to abridge it, like, really, really abridge it, Ichiro Mamiya is, a, is an artist. This is his house. It's haunted. It's got frescoes. And uh, yeah. that's why he's pissed we're ignoring them. <laughs> uh, Lady Mamiya is actually the one haunting the house. And uh, she wants her kid back. But, you know, she's a ghost. Is, is that the baby that was mentioned when uh, when Ah went to uh, dig that little, little yeah. tower? Ah. <laughs> I, I promise that's not intentional. Yeah, no, it's fine. So we're going to do that same strategy here. And now that we've flooded the basement, we're going to sneak into this room because the statue that was blocking it is uh, gone. Use the wood to cross this gap. We're gonna grab this gem, and you know, I really, really want that knife, but that's just too far to travel, you know? Hello, control pad, pad please. <laughs> D-pad, work with me! The D-pad sounds sounds like it, it it's considering the knife, just considering it a little. All right. So we only need one more call. And I guess to further uh, give a little bit more context, you can probably infer some things that happened from the next room. So pay, pay very close attention because we might be in and out of this. It is a speed run after all. Also, when you're in this call mode, the spirits cannot grab you. Oh. So you can just kind of, like, keep charging forward. All right, so here's where Ah is going to hang out for a moment. We're going to hang out next to the fourth one, because that's most commonly the one that we need. It, it is also the number of death in Japanese. Oh. It's not always... The thing we need is the key from here. It's not always guaranteed to be here, and in this case it wasn't. I just saved, right? I, I'm pretty sure I saved, but... I, I'm pretty sure you <laughs> saved as well, but can't hurt to make another one. <laughs> if you're unlucky, you can get a skeleton that poisons you. And it's not good when that happens. So we need the diary key from the coffin. And you know what? I'm just going to chill here. I'm sure nothing bad can happen. Oh, no! Did, did oh, somebody, hey. Did somebody need uh, spirits? <laughs> There's that knife we wanted. And you didn't even have to push anything on the D-pad for it. Uh-huh. Oh, we got into a fight. Normally I don't on my way out, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> we're just going to try and run. Oh, okay, that's bad. This is why we saved. Yo. Actually, hold on. I have a, I have a solution to this problem. I can literally just walk up here, and I have... Whoops, I need the second, the ne nope, other spoopy, other spoopy. <laughs> All right, it's setting in a little bit. <laughs> it's setting in just a little bit. <laughs> it, it's on one of these spoopies. <laughs> okay, we're fine. This is why we grabbed the pills. So okay, it did so... the curse began to set in. Does the curse make it so, so that uh, Ah can't move at all? Yeah, that completely ah. stuns that character in fear. All right, so we're going to use the diary key here, and now we know that we can push statues just inherently by using that diary key. Theoretically, you're supposed to read the diary, and it tells you that you can, but you only need to actually use the key to be able to find out that you can. <laughs> we, we, we respect uh, the owner's privacy here. <laughs> 
I probably didn't need to pray for that, but I wasn't sure if a full round of attacks would have done it normally. Also, we're getting way more encounters than I want right now. You know what? We're attacking. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> okay, good. One round of attacks does kill at this level. I should know that, but like, you know, marathon luck and everything. What level my do playing you usually is end slightly different. At? Uh, most of my runs tend to be like under an hour and ten minutes. Uh, so we want spoopy number two here to grab this knife, spoopy number one to grab this, and then we're going to use the low key out here on the balcony, which. The fact that the low key opens that is kind of confusing to me, but whatever. Bal Balcony is famously these... known for being low. <laughs> these boulders don't hurt you until they start moving. So you could literally just walk right through them without issue. Well, well speaking of things you can okay. touch, I do actually have a $50 donation here from Lady Linalia. Uh, hi, Karma. Good luck on the run. I know this is a horror game, but I've got to ask, is there anything in this game I can pet? Do not advise. Do not advise. <laughs> also, hi, Linalia. Thank you for the donation. <laughs> All right, so here's one of those traps that I was talking about earlier. The fastest way to get out of them is to pray, and it breaks the trap consistently always. Um, Prayer, theoretically, good for everything you can... in Sweet Home. <laughs> yep. <laughs> theoretically, you can uh, try and dodge it or duck it, but then that means you have to wait for the entire little sting to play. Uh, Prayer breaks it instantly, so we want to have Spoopy number one with the pick and the pulley. There's a pulley inside that. It's kind of like a cart more than a pulley, I guess, but yeah. That allows us to walk faster, which speed run, it's important. You know, the, I, I, I did hear something about that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to use the pick, and that allows us to walk on ice. Going to grab this candle. We no longer need the bow, so I'm going to put it there. I kind of have a particular way that I like to go about this right now. <laughs> Do you so just being slide very around on that ice if you don't happen to have the pick? If you don't have the pick, you slide all the way into those spikes oh. and you take consistent uh, terrain damage. Uh, I want to use the pulley and you'll notice that now my walking is a significant bit faster. And we've got three traps to deal with in this room. So we're just gonna pray for every single one. Normally you have to wait for that entire uh, Oops, definitely not Jaws thing to play out. <laughs> but, uh, like I said before, if you use the prey, it just completely shatters the thing before that even finishes. Got a few more enemies to deal with. And, again, we're kind of just living tonic to tonic. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, spoopy, spoopy, gonna... spoopy, I understand that feeling completely. Yeah. Uh, we want to use the lighter to get past the rope. And I believe we already used the last tonic, so we're just going to pick this one up. Any encounters we get are actually kind of nice right now. To build up your levels? Uh-huh. The next level gated thing we need is level 14, which I think we're like level 11 right now, so we've still got a bit of fighting to do, but we also have some plot progress to make in the meantime. Oh, all right, this is a good thing we have the pills. I'm gonna have to use a tonic after this fight regardless. Uh, uh is frozen, so we're gonna go back here. Oh, dang it, I need other spoopy. <laughs> I did see it's someone kind of... in chat mention that uh, four spoopies and ah is the secret nightmare difficulty of this game. 
Uh, I'm just actually going to use the tonic right now. Normally I would go down below and grab the item down there, but I actually just want the tonic right now. All right, so here comes the spooky part of this. We're going to be leaving those pills that cure status ailment behind. I, so I'm if already. we do get inflicted, that is bad, and we need to load our last save. So remember those spirits that I said we're trying not to get hit by? We're going to get intentionally hit by these. And I'm specifically making sure my other party members get hit first so that uh, oh, you're, I don't you're have to Oh, you're in the swap. doorway so you don't get hit. Uh-huh. They do not hit anybody that is hidden underneath things, which we'll be taking advantage of later. Nope, oh, got another fight right here. Skeleton! Mar! I can't quite do, uh... Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody that I should have gotten in here just to do a Skeletor impersonation. <laughs> Uh, sadly, that is not one in my playbook. <laughs> Fair. Uh, so at this point, if you want to get another, like, two or three donations, go for it. All right. Well, uh, Infinite Mans uh, sends in $25 saying, To Karma's choice for being a good sport and overall sweet home. Er, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, once again, Karma's choice is to save K in that Fatal Frame free run happening later tonight. So go get your donations in for that if you want to see Karma get her way. Um, right, that, right now, that's $1,440 out of $4,000. Uh, we also have $250 from Anonymous. No comment, but wow, Anonymous, you are powerful. We appreciate you. We also appreciate Jaren, who donates ten dollars. Also, no comment. Thank you for giving me no words to read. I I, I mean that. <laughs> um, it, it it's been it's been nice to to not have to to do voices, but like Skeletor apparently. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm just gonna clean up the floor a little bit so that I uh, have room to maneuver and kill things more easily because we're going to be not super grinding here, but we're going to be fighting a lot of these armors while we're here. I, and okay. basically the idea behind the way I'm farming here is that I want to burn out my prayer points and then use a tonic, do a bit of plot, and then kind of repeat that. So we're going to use, I think, the twin key here. Yeah, that was it. Not to be confused with the twin twinkie. <laughs> I think I want one more fight here. Yeah, I want one more fight. So I'm just going to walk around in circles here because there's ice on the other side of the store. I would not like to go in right now. Well, while you try to get that, I'd like to talk a little about some of the amazing prizes we have. Uh, you just saw a prize segment with uh, our lovely prize person, uh, Frozen Flygon, and Air Angel earlier. But again, uh, donating at any time for the rest of this day gets you entered. Uh, depending, of course, on your minimum donation, uh, to win one of those amazing prizes, including a Resident Evil 2 painting by Caroline Desi Carolyn Design. Uh, that's $25 minimum. Or you could also get a G900 Chaos Spectrum mouse donated by Worm uh, for $15. You want to take a look at those prizes? Go to gamesdonequick.com, select the prize tab, and make sure you go to gamesdonequick.com slash donate to get those donations in. Heck yeah. Here's Yamamura. Oh, and, hey. uh, just, you know, pops in, says hi. You, you seem to be doing fine after we last saw you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so one thing about the movement altering items is that, like, when you enable one, the other loses effect. You can only have one in effect. So you can either have the pulley or the pick active at one time. So... Oh, so you can't uh, use want them to... both to be speedy on the ice. Yeah. So we're back into pulley mode here to go fast. And I'm going to kind of loop around a little bit more here and get a bit more experience. So uh, if you want to keep going on donations for a little bit, go for it. Sure thing. Take DOC donates $25 with no comment. And also with no comment, but uh, and also $25 is Groobane. I, I love looking at some of these donation names. 
Um, I've got a question for folks in chat. Uh, we've seen a number of enemies in Sweet Home so far, including uh, Wall Man, Mirror, Karma's favorite armor. Am, do, do I have that right? Is your favorite armor, or is it a, a, another enemy here? <laughs> uh, that's a tough question. But if there's think... any that have caught your eye, please donate and let me know, because I'm kind of curious. There, there's been a lot of interesting uh, enemies in this progenitor of horror games, as it were. I think one of my favorites just has to be man. <laughs> because it's it's just like a guy that's standing there looking away from you. Just man. Yeah, and it's just man with an exclamation point. Oh, okay. It has to make sure you get that exclamation mark in. Got it. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Check my prayer points real quick. I am at 129, so two more fights, and then I will move on for plot. So uh, if you wanted to do a little bit more. Mechalink donates $25. Also no comment. And same for Mole King Q. $25, no comment. Mole King. Is there a Mole King in this game, I wonder? That's, that seems kind of like There is not. Oh, now, now I'm slightly <laughs> sad. <in. laughs> um, but you know what makes me happy? Uh, Frost Fatales has a t-shirt with the Yeti. Um, they, they are donating $5 per Frost Fatales shirt sold to Malala Fun. Uh, we also have a Frost Fatales event pin available, which is a first for our uh, Frame Fatales events, and you can find them all at theyeti.com. Uh, of particular note, on the ensemble shirt, uh, which was drawn um, very beautifully, by the way, one of the characters on there is Ray from Fatal Frame 3. So horror block absolutely represented on that shirt. Definitely go ahead, go to theyeti.com and take a look. Maybe order a shirt, maybe order two. I hear they're very comfy. So that room, uh, it's just a bunch of cats and mice. They kind of just do their own thing and you have to hope that they let you through. It's kind of brilliant. I love it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, we're ready to make some pretty significant plot progress. But yet again, I would like to, uh, you know, burn some prayer points, get some experience. So uh, if you want to keep going, go for it. Okay. Uh, Anonymous here donating $51. No comments, but thank you so much for your generous donation. Um, and again, all those nations going to Malala Fund, working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls secondary education, invest in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. Girls like Ah and Spoopy. I, I guess the and, other and Spoopies. Spoop. <laughs> yeah, we've got Ah, Spoopy, and Spoopy. There we go. Ah, on, Spoopy, on and Spoopy. Also, girls fighting for change, uh, and some of our other upcoming horror game protagonists. But hopefully, with Malala Fund, the girls uh, who are getting this assistance with their secondary education are not suffering any horrors uh, like the ones that our horror protagonists are facing. Indeed, I'm gonna quickly pop a save here because if I accidentally look at this it's this translation does have a little bit of an issue with these statues before they have any of the candles put in <laughs> i've had some interesting crashes okay so we're gonna sneak on over grab the other tonic and then probably move on to uh well i i should probably still do a little bit of grinding here so Go ahead and keep going, actually. Sure. Uh, I'm actually seeing comments and chats uh, about yeah. my earlier question. Um, what's your favorite uh, monster, uh, I, I guess, in, in, in this game? Uh, we've got some people who definitely agree with, man! <laughs> <laughs> every uh, time I hear, every time I see that in game, I'm like, I forgot to bring an octagon. <laughs> uh, I also see maggots. Um, some people are confused about the uh, the the suits of armor, but uh, yes, just just basically consider them a zombified suit of armor or a possessed suit of armor. Um, yeah. I see spear, torso, falling chandelier. Wait, is a falling chandelier in this game as well? Uh, it's one of those um, <laughs> reactable traps. It's not quite as much an enemy. I I'm not having good luck with lighting fixtures today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> happens to the best of us. 
we're, we're, we're working on it. Uh, one of these days, I will learn to not have a chandelier around. <laughs> God. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna do, I think. No, I think I'm just gonna move on. We're in a good spot here. So I'm gonna pop the tonic here. We have everything we need. So we're going to use the twin key. Being very careful with my enunciation there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna drop a save here. And we're going to take a look at this guy. Oh, wait. Actually, I just realized I need to be playing as Ah right now. Oh, well, okay. uh, hello, friend, and goodbye, friend. Yeah, we're going to show him the ring, and then we're going to pray. And I actually am not sure what the threshold for that prayer is, but I do know most of the other thresholds. I just maximum pray that. So why so... does it have to be Ah specifically for... Uh... You need to be talking to that character with whoever has both rings in their inventory. Which so just it could be either of the others. Yeah. yeah. So flashing warning after Yamamura goes through this barrier here, and also um, NES gore warning. All right, flashing warning and and NES gore warning. I, I'm kind of curious what ooh NES gore is like, uh, but it's it doesn't look good pretty for intense. Mora. <laughs> For uh, an NES game, to say the least. Well, uh, Yamamura, yeah. we we knew you well. Also, more intense flashing right here coming up. Uh, we're gonna split Ah from the party because when Yama or when Mamiya shows up, not only does she do a lot of like flashing screen shenanigans, but she also yeets the entire party that you have back to the fireplace over here. But thankfully, we kept a couple people over here. So we're just going to grab this gold key, which unlocks precisely four doors. And if you check the bed right here, you get a dress, which refills your entire party's prayer. Wow. Who knew it was and, that easy? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, there's one of four doors unlocked. This key is 25% spent. And very shortly here, it is going to be 50% spent. <laughs> this key is very useful. And by that, I mean it is absolutely required, but... Uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned it is still... the board ha had like 100 uses. How many uses does the key have? <laughs> uh, well, there's specifically only four. I'm going to run here because I have a weird thing with I want my party to be synced on experience. <laughs> I know it's not that big of a deal to have one character 10 experience behind, but gosh darn it, I am keeping them in sync. That That is exactly how I play uh, RPGs. <laughs> my, my Pokemon team just spends hours on, until everyone, even the ones in the boxes, are all nice and evil. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the wooden planks that you find have five steps on them before they break. The board or the plank or the other type has a hundred uses uh the it's like they have different names they're the same item effectively but one of them is more durable than the other we're gonna stand here and grind up into uh we're gonna grind up to level 14 here and this spot has a bunch of high experience enemies. I'm specifically walking up and down underneath this because it's really easy to accidentally hold other directions and go not where you want to go. Oh, so you can actually Which go is... elsewhere in while you're... Yeah, it's just more to keep myself consistent. <laughs> liches have a chance. Like, we cannot kill liches in one go. So they actually have a chance to do an attack. And if we're unlucky, they can do an attack that actually blows a party member away from the rest. <sighs> so it's going to be just a little bit before we hit level 14 if you want to get another donation or two. No problem. I actually want to remind everyone that once again, Karma's choice, uh, if you want to donate um, to her choice of incentive, 
is uh, the save K incentive for Fatal Frame 3 that's coming up in two runs from now. Uh, that incentive closes apparently in hour 10, uh, so you don't actually have the whole game to get it in. Uh, would you really, really just let the only the only man die in Fatal Frame 3? No, we're better than that. <laughs> And right now, we're at $1,490 out of $4,000 on that incentive. If you could nice. get that in, <laughs> if you could get that in, um, get your donations in for that, I greatly appreciate that. Uh, Karma would appreciate that. I'm sure Kay would absolutely appreciate that. Probably. Yeah, I, I think he probably doesn't want to die. <laughs> you know, I, Just I usually, uh, I'm usually drinking that not die juice. <laughs> generally the preferred flavor and hey would you look at that we are level 14 so let's go do some plot stuff uh the next thing we need to do is gather the three slides to put into the projector and of course now that we're back in the start of the mansion like we're running into level one enemies but we're uh, extremely powerful with infinite prayer at this point which yeah that dress that i found lets us basically restore our prayer points whenever we want. I'm gonna push the statues, head out into this gardeny area, and this is more of a case of theoretically we could grab the gloves to get through here safely, but it's such little damage that we might as well just walk right through it. Alright, so here's slide number two. And I hope you're ready for use number three of four of this key. I, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. All right, well, there we go. It's now 75% used. And by when I say 75%, I mean like I've unlocked 75% of the doors that it unlocks. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hang out right here because I want my lead character to get hit by the spirit. <laughs> so spoopy number one here is gonna split from the party and use the gold key on the last place it is useful for. And we're early enough, or we're at a point in the mansion where it really doesn't matter all that much if, uh, like, Spoopy number one here can fend for himself. It's fine. Spoopy, we're Oops, counting actually, on you. this is a little dangerous. Oh, okay, no, it, it, it's the, a wolf. We don't pet the wolf, I, I assume? Yeah, no, we, we don't pet the wolf. Um, everything outside of this room is completely safe, but this room itself is a little bit dangerous. And just to minimize the amount of time that we spend getting in and out of encounters, we're going to take our second party here. And we're going to do the call strats again. Except this time, Spoopy number one is a lot faster and can just new him on back to the rest of the group that he wants to be hanging out with. Uh, I think one more donation right now would be good. Excellent. I, I have someone you, I hear you've been wanting to hear from. Royal Blue Wizard sends in $25. Good luck, Karma. May the RNG be in your favor, and no one gets spirited away at inconvenient times. <laughs> Thankfully, we are only getting spirited away at intended times, so <laughs> much appreciated, RBW. W would you also call them nintended times, since this is a game for the NES? Probably. Uh, let's see. I think I'll just. I think I'll just pray and end this fight. We might get one extra encounter here with uh, Spoopy number one, but all right, we're fine. I risked like one encounter there, but it wouldn't have been bad, just a slight time loss. All right, so now we're going to put the slides in. All right, there's there's a person there. Little bottom left of that looks a little suspicious. There's a baby. Okay, that's looking real suspicious. Hmm. Okay, this is a little terrifying. Let's just uh, pray, because that's what you do in this game. Well, yeah, what, what's and... happening here? <laughs> yeah, so that's the uh, family that lived here, and the fire kind of represents the happenings of the house. It's fine. Y you know what? That fire getting ca caught on the slide, that, that was real ahead of its time. I, I need to get the props. <laughs> I think it's part of the picture, but I'm not sure. Like, that's kind of how I interpreted it, but you do pray to make the slide... Uh, you make you pray to make the projector burst a hole in the wall, so <laughs> there is that. 
I'm not gonna lie, when I was playing through this the first time casually, when I saw that picture, I was dreading putting in every slide. It, it does have a bit of an ominous build up to it. <laughs> yeah. Whoops, we want to use the twin key here. And we're back into kind of like the basement-y zone, so the enemies are pretty simple, but we want this key. And we're about to get into the uh, end game grind here, but we do need to grab a few things to set it up. I'm not sure why I'm praying here when I can just attack these to kill them. <laughs> we're too strong for this. We're gonna give it a little bit of something to be proud about before we send it off into its doom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spoopy, use prey. <laughs> Nothing like a big 330 damage hit to the face to wake <laughs> up in the morning. I, I hear it's more effective than hot drinks. Hmm. I'll have to leave it to the scientists on that one. All right, chat, you, you heard karma. <laughs> 330 damage to the face or, or hot drinks, which is better to wake up to in the morning? <laughs> I know what I would pick, but you know. <laughs> oh, hello, maggots. We're just... I, I don't even need to use the lighter. I could literally just attack and they would be gone, but... My brain tells me use the lighter. <laughs> All right, does so the lighter we're gonna use... have infinite use? Uh-huh. It's a key it item. It is just a key item, yeah. We have now used the iron key as much as we're going to use it. <laughs> On those two gates... And that's it. I think there's um, maybe a few more places that you can actually use it, but those are the two places we care about. Oh, and you know, sometimes the mansion erupts and fire spouts, or this might just be water, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Fi fire, fine. Just one letter off. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? R and N don't even like look that much different for each other. So, you know, you erase a little bit of the N in fine, and you get fire that... They're that close. It's fine. Yeah, it's true. Or is it fire? <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna find out, I guess. <laughs> and we're now at the point where we can actually one-turn the liches, so that's really handy because the place we're about to be going has nothing but them. Okay, uh, I need... Oh, whoops. Okay, I actually got this slightly mixed up. Thank you, people, for <laughs> donating for Spoopy, Spoopy, and all. I'm going to force one encounter here to set my step counter. Um, well, I, I say step counter as if I know what it's going to be, but I'm just going to minimize my chance of getting an encounter before I want it. Okay, so we're going to split the team up here and have Spoopy number one go up this way and Spoopy number four who is part of our team, go this way. We're going to save the game in case something goes horribly wrong, which, like, it never does, so it's probably going to happen in the marathon if it's ever going to, you know? Have you ever wanted to There's a to bunch say of things that could go wrong that I, that I always worry about every time I do this part, and they never happen, so I'm just, I'm waiting for them to pay their dues, you know? All right, well, fingers so, crossed you don't have to say that's never happened before. <laughs> I'm ready for it. But we're just... In this part... Whoop, eh, you know what? That's not even bad. That's not bad. In this part, if you were to go into this with a full team, it basically makes it so that every time you step into the moving water... Okay, come on. I don't want to be caught, please. Thank you. So is this right, screen, was... uh, kind of blue because of the water before, or was that just game being That game? was because uh, the screen was blue right there because a character was caught. If you attack while a character is caught, you damage that character instead of the enemy. So you need to pray to release that character from being caught. This game took it serious. Yeah. <laughs> And that's actually one of the things that I absolutely love about this game. Um, this being a survival horror RPG, it's not so much that you're like... I mean, sure, it does a few jump scary things from here to and 
from time to time. But it's more about that fear of, like, am I going to make it kind of thing? Like, am I going to get slowly whittled down and just die from making a bad decision somewhere? And, like, this game does that kind of environmental horror extremely well. And uh, as you can ima or as you can probably tell, we're grinding right now. We're going to try and get up to level 16 because that's what we need to finish the game. And this room happens to have only liches, Oops, which all liches. give the highest experience in the game. So there's level 15. Um, I need to count to seven. So if you want to drop some donations, I will be counting to seven. Okay. Uh, well, first off, Mr. Rez donates $25 going, ah, real spoopies. <laughs> I, I, I think it's all liches right now, but thank you so much for your donation. <laughs> um, would also like to just once again point out, uh, well, yes, four spoopies and an ah is basically you donated to give Karma the secret nightmare difficulty. We do, in fact, have nightmare difficulty for Fatal Frame 3 Tormented Souls coming up. Wait, is, is, is it Tormented Souls? The Tormented, my bad. I, I mixed up two horror games there. I'm so sorry. But Fatal Frame 3 Tormented, thanks to your generous donations, we unlocked New Game Plus Nightmare Difficulty, but that Save K incentive is still open. Uh, so get those donations in for it. You do not have uh, the entire run behind and you don't want to let K die Great. again. Also, sorry, I'm kind of mumbling the numbers. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> keep mumbling. But feel so, free to keep going. Sure. So uh, once again, get, that, get those donations in to save K. Uh, Unfortunately, you can't name K Spoopy, but uh, <laughs> I know it's a shame. But actually, while I'm at it, uh, there are lots of uh, in uh, incentives for Fatal Frame 3. You can actually choose to dress up K if that's something you're into. Uh, that's uh, So that's something you can look forward to. But, but, what's the point of dressing up K if you let him die, you know? So, yes, please get those donations in to save K. When you go to gamesunquick.com slash donate, make sure you select the incentive Bye. or you make a note of it in your comment so our donation processors, our wonderful team, knows that, that where your donation is going to. And if you've got think, time for uh, one more, I've got like a, yes. another thing to read. Go for it. All right. So, uh, once again, uh, Frost Patels, and other hotfix events and shows are brought to you by viewers like you. So your subscriptions and bits, and I've been seeing a bunch of them in chat, uh, help keep the channel running for these fun events, including shows like One and done uh, Unapologetically Black and Fast, Time Capsule, Mercy Kill, uh, Speed Runs from the Crypt, which, you know what, if you're watching Horror Blog, you're probably a pretty big fan of. Uh, Appropriate. <laughs> Probably, you know? <laughs> uh, so thanks to, it is thanks to the viewers, like you, your subscriptions and bids uh, are going to help this channel running. So thank you so much for all of your support. Awesome and perfect timing because we just finished our Lich Grind. Basically the goal of that is to stop just shy of level 16. We have a little bit more uh, plot stuff that we wanna do. So I'm gonna like fight some stuff on the way to what I'm doing to get level 16 on the way to the end. But we are very quickly approaching the end of the game here. And uh, yes, we just, uh, we picked up a coffin, swapped it for the dress. We kind of don't need the dress anymore. Oh no. We're just, and then we, uh, we put the coffin on a table, swapped it for the tonic. It's fine, we'll be back for it later. We're too powerful for the dress now. <laughs> um, so we're gonna use the tonic to pick up the diary and then we're gonna swap the mallet for the amulet uh the ending boss fight for this game is effectively a puzzle and you specifically need four items for that puzzle the amulet the photo the diary and the coffin and if so you that could just takes remind up... me how many inventory spaces do you have six Lovely. We need, <laughs> yeah, so we need the rope to cross that chasm to get two of the items, which, by the way, we left that amulet back there so that we could pick it up next to the diary. So I'm basically using um, the Japanese run's best route. And I have to say, the routing that 
um, they did was absolutely genius. I love it, and that's part of what made me want to do this. Uh, we're going to swap the coffin for the rope here. And now we have all of the items that we need, and we've been carrying the blue candle because we also need that. Uh, I'm going to save here because we need to do a very high prayer, and sometimes it's hard. Um, actually, that reminds me Bar of Bar going question. up and down. Yeah? Sorry, a great question I saw earlier in chat. Uh, you mentioned the Japanese route. Um, is the Japanese one, um, does that have any significant time difference with the uh, translated versions? Um, it's... Right now, that one is a lot more efficient. Like, my best run is about four minutes slower. This is something that I picked up very quickly. And, uh... Yeah. Uh, Which means there's time. There's there's room for you to optimize. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing how closely I can get this time in, in line with the Japanese version. You heard it here. Y you are seeing the makings of... Oh, hey, hey what's happening here? Uh, <laughs> this so this yeah. is a very different person. <laughs> We're, we're fighting doppelgangers of ourselves at this point. Um, you can fight all five of them, but you only need to fight three of them. And uh, we're actually right up on the final boss here, as soon as we're done with these three fights. Um, and I'm just gonna right now give a uniform like flashing warning, because there is going to be a lot of full screen flashing that is very intense. So, yet again, I know there's already a warning, but please, please, please take care of yourself. <laughs> if, if that is something that affects you or impacts you negatively, please be careful. Uh, this game is, in fact, evil. Uh, not Resident Evil, but it is evil. <laughs> Alright, well, so on your way in, Yamamura kind of tells you the order of things that you need to do, but um, here's the final fight. Phase 1... I'm just, I'm not going to deal with it. I, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> so it really, uh, what we're doing is we're waiting for a specific piece of dialogue. Nothing that we do matters until we get a specific dialogue. And I'm getting unlucky. This is actually RNG. She, she does seem intent on making you suffer. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're waiting for... Um... I will kill you all die, I think. Really? Um, I mean, I, I'll try the amulet and the photo. No, okay, we're... No, we, it really is just bad luck. I am getting extremely bad luck. I, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't misreading that. Well, I am suffering right now, <laughs> Mamiya. Please, please, just give me the dialogue. Mamiya! And, and we Mamiya, had donations you wishing you good RNG, no less. Mamiya! What are you doing? What did I do? <laughs> I'm supposed to have different dialogue by now. It usually takes like... Oh, there it is! There it is! Let's go! Okay, we get to play the game. Let's go! Holy crap, I have never had it take that long. There's your that's never happened before. Yeah, there's my never happened before. All right. So we're going to pray, and that's going to switch it over into phase two, where damage actually matters. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Here's phase two. Um, she transformed. It's fine. Mama Mia, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're just going to keep attacking, because uh, praying doesn't actually help us right now. It specifically, like, does not let you pray. It tells you it's not needed right now. So we're just going to try and get to a damage barrier. Damage gate, whatever you want to call it. Also, geez, I might actually have a character die during this fight with how long that first phase took. I, I, I was I'm... just actually just about to ask that. Is it possible to die? I know she's yelling yes. it at you, but... <laughs> <laughs> it is very possible to die. Not usually, but... All right, so Ichiro loves me. Um, check this diary... You'll maybe understand that things were not so great near the end there, you know. Uh, now we got to pray, but we're actually going to pray on all three to do more damage. I want to get better rolls on that. I want to get a better roll. If I'm going to have 
this low HP. I want to get good rolls on the praise. So you can cancel out of the praise and try again. Yeah, as long as you don't, uh, as long as it's not the last one. All right, so we're just going to do some more damage. I am actually terrified right now because Ah is sitting pretty low on HP. I might have to reset because she also has the item that we need to finish. Give me the baby or die. Um, all right. Well, I will follow instructions and show the coffin. And one more prey, and we are going to be done here. And this is really, really tense. <laughs> time. GG's. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a little bit scary at the end there. <laughs> well, 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 that means the game did, came, did what it set out to do. <laughs> I mean, okay, I will say that if I did die there, I could have um, ejected. That would have ejected me from the fight with the other two characters. And I could have finished with the other two characters and gotten an ending with one person dead. There's five different endings, depending on how many people survive. And it's actually kind of neat that that's the case, because uh, it actually takes a lot of effort to finish with only one or two people left. Well, okay, it takes a lot of effort to finish with only one person left. It's not as hard to do two or three people alive, but... I don't know. I think that's a neat touch. Yeah, that that sounds really interesting. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> and, and complete with all the lore that we did not get to see this run. Um, you know, if you want to find out why uh, Lady Mamiya was so angry and and well, really wanted Karma to die, definitely go and check this game out for yourself. Yeah, um, I would like to keep this going through the credits here because we do have a little bit after the credits that I would like to show. <laughs> um, gosh, this game is really cool. I skipped over a lot of the lore pretty intentionally, but also because speed. Also, shoutouts to Fishman. Shoutouts to Fishman. <laughs> um, I extremely highly recommend giving this a casual playthrough and... Um, if, you're ha if you ever had trouble with the Gaijin translation, this one does a really nice job of making things nice. Also, I can't believe the music is gone. <laughs> I know, silly joke. Anyway. Oh, that was amazing. And shout outs to Arthur King as well, in case you were wondering if this was made by uh, Capcom. But yeah, highly recommend giving this a try. I know I've said that like 50 times during this <laughs> run, but this game is legitimately so cool. All right, well, folks know to, to give this game a look, but if they want to give you a look-see, where can they find you, Karma? On Twitch TV, or twitch.tv slash karma underscore dragon s. Right, folks, if you heard it, if, if that run was your jam, if Karma's sense of humor, amazing sense of humor was your thing. Oh, speaking of which, is that, is that... Is that Our man? report is done. You guys did great. Except for this one thing. And if you're not listening, it's the Jaws theme right now. <laughs> man! <laughs> yeah, so that's the sprite of the man enemy. And uh, <laughs> that's just it. That's it. Right Man. there. You cannot press any buttons to continue or reset the game. That's just how it leaves you. Not okay. even a to be continued. <laughs> nope. Never mind that the party could probably one shot that enemy with no issues at this point. Anyway. Well, thank you so much for that, Karma. What a wonderful run. And again, if you want to check out Karma, you can find her at twitch.tv slash karma underscore dragoness. Do I have that right? Yes. Thank you for having me. Okay. And well, 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 we're wrapping things up here, folks. Uh, just a reminder, once again, that Karma's choice of incentive was Fatal Frame 3, The Tormented, the Save K incentive, uh, which has gone up significantly since I last talked about it here. And uh, it went up to $2,156 out of $4,000. That's 
over halfway there. And with that, we've also actually opened、uh, the accessory and costume incentives. So you can get your choice of dressing up the characters of Fatal Frame Three.、Uh, you can.、Uh, Put an accessory on Miku,、uh, who was actually a character from, I believe, the first game.、Um, you can put a,、uh, a costume on Ray, who was actually the character on our Frost Fatale's The Yeti T-shirt.、Um, K, K, who we want to save. You can put a cost. You can put an accessory on K. Why would you put any money to putting an accessory on K if you're not going to save him? Why not do both? Of course, you should do both. And of course, of course, the crowd favorite. There's a cat. You can put an accessory on the cat. Why wouldn't you do that? So go ahead, take a look at those.、Uh, once again, you can check out those incentives and more at gamesonquick.com/donate. And not only that, coming up next, we've got Resident Evil 2 Remake being run by Cyanide Sugar.、Uh, she will be running Leon A. Standard.、Um, At 120 frames per second,、uh, some of you might be wondering why does the FPS matter here? It actually does matter. For you're gonna have to find out though. So stick around. Make sure you watch that. But before before you do, just know you can also dress up Leon. Because around here, we've just learned dressing up is powerful. Dressing up restores your prayer. So you have your choice of putting Leon. In either his standard、uh, Raccoon City Police Department rookie outfit, or you can have him as a noir detective. Now, right now,、uh, the noir detective、uh, setting is winning quite handily,、uh, and by quite handily, I mean it's running by one dollar. Okay,、uh, so that's a really, really close bid war. If you want to get that Raccoon City Police Department、uh, costume up, go ahead, get your donations in because that's three hundred ninety dollars to three hundred eighty nine dollars. That's just one dollar, folks. Your donation makes a difference because we have a minimum five dollar donation. And again, getting that donation in、uh, makes you eligible to win some of our amazing prizes.、Um, and with that, I'm going to let you stew on that for a bit because we're going to take a quick break with a Twitch ad. But stick around; we'll be right back.
And folks, welcome back to Frost Fatales 2022. Uh, I'm Zokabun. I'm your host for this part of the horror block. Uh, we just finished an amazing run of Sweet Home by Karma. If you missed it, make sure you catch the VODs on our Games Done Quick YouTube channel. Those will all be coming up in the next couple of days. Uh, coming up, we've got Resident Evil 2 Remake run by Cyanide Sugar. You're going to not want to miss this uh, because Cyanide Sugar has been working really, really hard on that run. And also, it's Leon. It's Leon. Who doesn't have fun watching Leon? Uh, <laughs> just a reminder, of course, that Frame Fatales and Hotfix events, uh, including this one, Frost Fatales 2022, are supported by your subscriptions and bids. And you can also use your Prime subs to help support future events. And you also get access to our amazing GDQ emotes, uh, including, we just added this during the course of this event, this event right here, the one you're watching, Faith Pop. If you take a look at the channel emotes, you see that cute little Faith, our, our cute Frame Fatales mascot, popping off. Can I get some of those in chat? I love seeing that emote. We're also going to be heading off uh, very shortly to a prize segment with our wonderful Air Angel, who you may have seen run, uh, I believe, Twin Dragons just yesterday. So get your Prime subs in. I want to see you show up in chat with those Faith Pop emotes. And while you're here, let's appreciate some of our amazing prizes. Hi gamers, I see your Faith Pops. How's it going? My name is Air Angel. I am the social media lead for Frost Fatales 2022. And I'm also doing the late night pl prize block with my small friend. Uh, I really hope you have been enjoying this block so far. And I wanted to go over a couple of prizes for the night so you know what is on the table. So. Uh, for a minimum $25 donation, we do have a new OLED switch uh, brought to you by Sense Mom, and we super, super appreciate it. It's super crisp. I love this so much. Um, very, very beautiful. And I have two of our grand prizes here. Uh, this was just announced today. So this is a new uh, SkyTech gaming PC. It is a custom build. Uh, if you would like to see all of the specs and see what goes into this monster of a machine, please go to gamesdonequick.com to check it out. Uh, it is <laughs> it is robust, so you might want to check it out. And this is an accumulative $125 donation throughout the week. So $25 yesterday, $25 today, etc. All added up to $125, this could be yours. Also, two-for-one deal, you could also... Enter a chance to win a PS5, if I can twirl the box around. <laughs> uh, this is also a $125 accumulative donation throughout the week. Um, so make sure to get those donations in. And we are also posting these prizes on our Instagram. Uh, at Games Done Quick on Instagram. We are showcasing prizes, runner Q&A, as well as clips from the marathon itself. So it's super cool and it's super fun. So make sure you check that out. Um... And yeah, this has been a lot of fun. It's gonna be like a sort of like a mini prize segment here. We're just hanging out during the horror block. I hope you all stay cozy and warm. Uh, and uh, I hope you have a hot drink because I could use a hot drink. So uh, I'm gonna hang out during the horror block. So I'll see you around. <laughs> You have those hot drinks ready for me, chat. Also those faith pops. Keep those faith pops coming, please. <laughs> uh, I, right now, we're still in the middle of our horror blog here at Frost Fatales 2022. I can't believe it's Wednesday, y'all. We're on day four of this marathon, and we just keep going. Uh, once again, our last run of the night will be Fatal Frame 3, The Tormented. Um, Miss Scarlet Tanager will be running it on New Game Plus Nightmare, thanks to your amazing donations. But if you all contribute, we can also save Kay. 
We're at $2,181 out of $4,000 already, y'all. And, and why wouldn't you want to save a character, you know? Get, just, just, just give Miss Scarlet Tanager a little bit more of a challenge. Is that mean? I hope not. <laughs> but we want more. We want more time here at Frost Hotels. I want more time. I'm sure you do too. Um, and speaking of which, we've got some donations here who, who also want to see some things. Blackheart Wings donates $5 saying, this is for Noir Leon. I need Noir Leon in my life. That's right, folks. Resident Evil 2 Remake coming up. You get your choice of Noir setting or Standard setting. Do you want to see old-timey Detective Leon? Or do you want to see fresh face police recruit Leon? Your donations can make that difference. So go ahead, get that donation in. Uh, right now, just taking a quick look at that incentive. Um, Noir setting is at $470 to the standard settings, $445. Folks, that's a $25 difference. Even one donation could change that tide. So once again, when you make that donation at gamesonquake.com slash donate, make sure you select the incentive or you make a note of it in the comments so we know what you want to do. Uh, speaking of which, uh, while we were away on those prize, uh, on that prize segment, we had an amazing $1,000 donation from Anonymous. No comment, but I bet you Anonymous was certainly excited for those prizes. Thank you so much for your generosity. I have a $25 donation here from J.K. Lee saying, always glad to see a bunch of wonderful women gaming for a great cause. That is exactly what we're doing here at Frost Fatales 2022. We are an all femme mar uh, speedrun marathon and showcase uh, hosted by Games Done Quick. Thank you all so much for being here. It is definitely viewers like you that help make events like this possible. And just to point out, we've already zoomed past our donation total for the first ever Frost Fatales charity event we did. That was back in 2020. Our milestone incentive tonight to get that new Game Plus nightmare was to surpass our amount for that first charity. Uh, if I could just take a quick look to look that up here, because I believe our milestone back then uh, was, uh, our, our milestone was set to like $54,000. And we zoomed past that today. I thought I was going to have to talk about it a lot while I was on here, but no, no, by the time I, I checked in, bam, you folks are amazing. <laughs> so I, I'm glad to hear and see that you all are as excited for these upcoming runs as I am. Um, I've also got a couple of people who are excited for me to read donations because here's a donation from, no comment, donation from Anonymous that says, well, well thank you, no comment. Uh, that was $125 uh, to saying donation from Anonymous that says, you, you want to puzzle me? I, I, I'm, I'm down to be puzzled. That, that's part of a horror game, right? You got to solve puzzles? Well, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, $25 from the Sound Defense. Uh, no comment, but it's also not from Anonymous. But thank you so much for your generous donations. Uh, another $5 from Anonymous. Also no comment. But Anonymous, your power is seen and felt. Perhaps a lot like Mr. X, since, you know, Resident Evil 2 Remake's coming up. I'm seeing a lot of Faith Pops in chat and also some coffee, po coffee pastas. Give me those coffee pastas. Give me, give me those Faith Pops. And hey, if you want me to read a coffee pasta, I'm down for it. <laughs> So to continue, another $25 from uh, the Sound Defense saying, I have no idea who Kay is, but we absolutely have to rescue him or her. Well, you're in luck, Kay, uh, because once again, you have the option to make that happen. Uh, Kay is surprisingly, I believe, the sole male character in the, the sole male playable character in the Fatal Frame series of games. For those of you who don't know, Fatal Frame is a series of games where you are usually playing um, a female whose only way of fighting the ghosts in the haunted mansions, hey, that seems to be a theme today, uh, is a camera. You might have heard it described as Pokemon Snap, but with ghosts. 
Do you want to see that? And more importantly, you want to let the guy have the fun? Well, you got to save Kay. So get your donations in for that. I've got $25 from Ducky saying, always so excited to see GDQ events. My partner and I have been watching for years and we are so excited to see Frame Fatale's events getting more limelight in the wider world. Good luck to all the runners and happy to help fundraise for such a wonderful cause. And once again, uh, Frost Fatales, events like these uh, are all courtesy of Hotfix, and uh, these are all brought to you by viewers like you. Your subscriptions and bits keep the Game Stun Quick channel running in between major charity events like, well, Game Stun Quick. Uh, so shows like One and done um Tina's RPG show, I guess, Legally Cute, uh, What's Faster, um, The First Step, and of course, if you're here, speed runs from the crypt. All of those are brought to you courtesy of your subscriptions and bits. So thank you so much for all of your support. We greatly appreciate it. And what also would greatly appreciate your support, Malala Fund. Your donations this event are all going to Malala Fund. Uh, Malala Fund is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala Fund advocates for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education, invest in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. And if you want to see actually what some of those changes uh, that you could cause, that some impact you can cause with your donations, I would actually suggest you go to assembly.malala.org. Assembly is a digital newsletter and publication from Malala Fund. It's co-founded by student and Nobel laureate Malala Yousafzai. Um, and uh, Malala Fund works to create a world where all girls can learn and lead. Malala herself began blogging about girls' education at age 11, and today she helps other girls tell their story with Malala Fund. We created Assembly as a platform for girls and young women around the world to share their thoughts, challenges, and accomplishments, and for all of us to learn about this new generation of leaders. So you can learn more and subscribe to this new letter, newsletter at assembly.malala.org. There's a lot of great stories on there. Um, one I'm looking at here is what girls aren't learning about personal finance in school. Actually, that's that's something pretty important. That's something I <laughs> I would have liked to learn more about in school. And you know what? Speaking of finance. Your support here is greatly appreciated. We appreciate those of you who are giving what you can to make this happen. I have a $25 donation here from, uh, let me make sure I've got this name right. <laughs> Lania Kea saying, I've met a lot of hard boiled eggs in my time, but you, you're 20 minutes, Leon. Let's get that noir costume. Thank you so much for that, Lania Kea. And while we're here, while we're being cozy, folks, uh, just a reminder that this marathon is continuing through the rest of the week. I mentioned today was day four. Can you believe it? It's day four. It's day four, and we're at a total of $58,000, uh, $58,691 raised for Malala Fund. Now then, that just blows my mind. Uh, but, but, tonight's not over yet. And we have three more days to go. Tomorrow, we've got Sonic Block. The day after, we've got a lot of puzzle games. And hey, if you were a fan of the Pokemon games, I think that was yesterday, the day before, you've got one more coming your way. Swiftaloo is back with Pokemon Pearl on March 4th, this Friday. That's just two days away. But also, there's I Am Fish by Aranel616. Baba is you by Uni. You might have seen Uni do an amazing job at the Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes co-op run with our very own Frozen Flygon earlier today. And if that didn't convince you how amazing Uni is at puzzles, Baba is you definitely will. And of course, on Saturday, we have our amazing, amazing headliners. 
uh, Celeste, Custom Maps, Into the Jungle, Any Percent Run by Frozen Flygon, Fire Emblem Three Houses by Aeon Frodo, who actually, hey, made a donation earlier. Thank you so much. Uh, Cadence of Hyrule by Calaria. That's a written game. If you haven't seen it, uh, you may be familiar with Crypto the Necrodancer, since I'm talking about spooky things here. Cadence of Hyrule is a Zelda skin version of that, so you are not going to want to miss any of this. But before all that, we've got runs to do, folks. We have runs here. Because I'm being told Cyanide Sugar is ready to give it to you. We're good to go, I think. <laughs> um, do we know what the winner of the bid wars is? Or the Noir setting and the non-Noir setting? Just to start off 